What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be diving back on into Stolen Realm, which has had a number of large patches since the last time we covered it about a year ago. If you've never seen this game before, it's a very sandboxy strategy RPG. You create all your characters, kind of like Icewind Dale style, and then the game just feeds you procedural campaigns that you run through with main storyline campaigns about reassembling the realm on the in-between. This is a game with a very high amount of customization in my opinion. Every single character has six gear slots. Every single character has fortune slots, which are effectively like big passive sort of buff things that you slide on in to develop up their build. There's a number of different classes that you start out with the blueprints of. And then there are also nine different talent trees, each one containing roughly 25 to 30 things that you can pick between and so this is one of those games where there's a lot when it comes to customization inside of here at the moment let me introduce you to my warriors we have apex dangle paladin for hire we have low touch royale she's got a two-handed sword and she busts people's head open and she's got monk skills even though she hits people with a sword we have the trace Adia, named because he ate three not two three fajita quesadillas in one sitting uh, he is a, what does this guy do? I don't remember. I'm like a summoner? What do you do? I think he shoots fireballs, man. Pretty sure he's a fireball guy. Almost positive he's a pyromancer. Uh, we also have Crash Nasty. Crash Nasty's a necromancer. Uh, we have Cash Falcon. She runs around dual wielding guns and shooting stuff in the face. And then we have Alpha Tickleman. Alpha Tickleman is our resident rogue and general lock picking specialist. He stabs stuff in the butt when it's not looking. All right, I need to run around, but here in town in between runs before you take quests, there's no penalty for like playing and losing quests in this game. You still get your XP, you still get all of your drops, you just come back to town and you don't get completion credit for like whatever the side quest or main quest was. But here in town, there's a bunch of different vendors. They all do a bunch of different stuff. They'll sell you everything from potions uh, to mana potions to weapons to armor to just whatever. Just check out all the vendors while you're here. On top of that, there is some limited crafting available in the game right now. You will find loads and loads of things uh, while you're playing through the game. Every single enemy drops everything from furs to spit, you know, to blood to anything else. And you can use it to make potions and other kinds of fun stuff. I haven't really dove too hard into the crafting yet, but I do feel like I'm kind of carrying a big chunk of my cast right now. Like, I feel like there are contributing members of our party, and I feel like there are non-contributing members of our party. And I would like everyone to be a contributing member. Well, I wasn't able to afford as much as I had thought that I was going to be able to afford, so unfortunately, I find myself in a predicament where we just bought one really big gun for our hunter. Now, this game is using Sinti assets. In fact, the entire game is more or less put together with assets. However, I do think that this game does a pretty good job at showing that even using asset packs and whatnot, you can actually put together something really awesome. Uh, this right here is the world map. This is a new addition to the game. They ordered it. They added it shortly after we covered the game last time. It allows you to travel around on a world map. There's going to be like side quests main quests, basically anything that's like a small little globe down here as a side quest, anything that's like a big quest over here. What do I have at the moment? Defeat the Wormrest Desert Knight. Sure, let's run it. I'm unafraid. Uh, but let's go ahead and run that thing. Uh, the game does have very cool artwork, by the way. Really cool looking stuff on the loading screens and whatnot. But let's go ahead and dive on into the desert and see what kind of trouble we can get ourselves into. If after watching this video you wanted to get the game for yourself, I will have a link for you down below in the description. On top of that, you can also find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream. Just in case you wanted to hang out live, I'm going to be ramping up streaming from here on out. I will be over there far more frequently, and so you can slide on through if you want. It's all good. Uh, let's see here. Before you engage the enemy, you hear the teasing whispers of Saldana, the Mistress of Chaos. Let's make this more interesting. Um, uh, no. I mean, I guess we get a frost hat if we do this. It is a pretty good hat, but I don't really have a cold wizard, so we're not going to benefit from the extra cold damage. Combat in this game is very simple. Uh, it's very compromising. 
it just lets you do basically whatever you want for fun. So at the beginning of every fight, uh, we can take our guys, we can deploy them wherever it is that we wish to deploy them. There will be various things on the battlefield that you can interact with. So this over here gives you higher dodge chance. There's this one right here, which means that you reflect nine damage. There's other ones that increase your damage some total. There's ones that make your spells cost way less mana when you cast them. Uh, some of them can be very, very good. And so keep an eye on the various shrines that are going to be on the map. For right now, we're going to pick a corner because we're kind of surrounded. And my belief is that when you're cornered, you should really just kind of pick a direction and run, basically. Skeeks, says the Obsidian Scorpion. Skeeks indeed, my friend. Skeeks indeed. It doesn't look like we have the range for this. That guy's only got 77 HP. That's not that much HP pretty sure I can drop him pretty quickly, so I'm not really going to cast a whole lot of spells for right now. I don't really, like, see the point. Uh, we're just going to, like, bury this guy real quick. I got a bad feeling he does something when we kill him. You can right-click on any enemy. It'll give you a full unit card that will tell you all their abilities, all the things they can do, all of the modifiers that they currently have on them, in case you're the kind of person that likes to be fully informed about your enemies. Uh, let's go ahead, and we will end turn right there. On this side, I can't really cast a whole lot over here, so instead, I'm going to put a fire enchant on her sword, and then I'm going to fall. That's that old classic right there, dude. Like, putting a fire enchantment on someone's sword, that's a that's a verified classic. That's the good stuff right there. I'm going to pull back on over this way, I guess. We'll see what the enemy decides to do. There's nobody else over there. All right, I'm going to pass both my turns in. And these guys can do what it is that they feel like they're going to do. But I feel like I've got the range advantage right now, having cleared out my corner of the map, or my little shoulder of the map, so I'm not that worried about it. Skeletal Warrior, pin him down. There you go. 18 damage put on out. We're going to go ahead and put a dot on this guy as well, called Haunt. It deals 13 damage a turn. And then from there, probably... Chuck a poison cloud over there. Why not? It puts four poison on the enemy. Then I'm going to go ahead and siphon off some of their mana to replace all the mana that I just lost. This character right here is mostly a healer and mostly a tank, so there's not really much that he can contribute to this experience right now. I think I've probably come over here with her, though. Let's give this guy the boot. Ugh, there it is. Big old boot. Didn't deal as much damage as I had hoped it would deal. This side. Oh, it stunned him, though. That's good. That keeps him out of my hair for another turn. Let's go ahead and put a fire damage over time effect on there. And then... I don't mind blocking off a wall of fire right there that the enemy has to go through in order to get to us. And as you can see, your combat actions on any given turn are very customizable in this game. We'll summon a wolf to attack that guy right there. Oh, that's right. We've got reflective damage inside this shrine's radius. Yeah, that sucketh. All right, well, we're going to have to figure that situation out. Might send him around. I actually don't think he can get around this way. Oh, okay. Yep, they're shooting like fire bolts or something at me from over there. Fair enough. I didn't realize there was two more guys. Well, at least we reflect damage, too. So, like, what you going to do? You know what I mean? Like, eh, at least we reflect damage as well. Uh, go ahead and give me another skeletal archer over here. He's going to fire off some damage. Apparently, that's not limited to melee combat. Like, for ranged attacks, he also gets a reflect. Feels ripper I'm going to come over here with the paladin. We're going to sunder this guy's armor so that we deal more damage. And then we're going to hit him again on this side. Probably, yeah, she's got a teleport strike that, like, hits everything inside an AoE area. Like a blinking strike, basically. Oh, these guys are frozen. How'd they get frozen? Did I blow up like a frozen barrel or something? Apparently, I froze my entire party. Unfortunately, I did not... Ow, that really hurt. I did not freeze the enemy, which is really kind of the hang-up here. Uh, looks like all the pets are going to deal their damage. Ooh, survive with 3 HP, huh? Ain't that something. All right, we need to throw around some heals. We'll go ahead and heal the skelly. And then I'll probably start lining up to go fight with these guys over here. On this side, just finish him off. There you go, big old scorpion down. Big old scorpion done been taken care of. Get on out of here, big old bark scorpion. Ain't nobody got time for you. All right, we're going to slide on over this way. And... I guess firebolt that guy. I mean... 
when in doubt, fall back on the old classic wizard abilities. We can line up a shot right there, which is great. And then my rogue, I would think, should be able to finish this guy off. But let's, like, guarantee and secure the kill. So point blank him with a thrown knife. Then on over this side, we're going to garret this guy. And that's going to put a fatty bleed on him. And so he should die at the outset of his turn, I'd think. Well, unless the summons get him first, but that's our combat all nice and knocked out. Uh, you can rotate the camera at any time. You can zoom in. You can zoom out. After the combat is done, you will be given a whole bunch of money. You will get an absolutely ludicrous amount of items. You will also get some XP. Every time you level up, you get five attribute points. If you take a look in here, you've got a number of different attributes. They affect everything from melee damage to the amount of healing that goes downrange to the amount of movement points that you get. It's entirely up to you what you want to put them in. Really what this game focuses on is just really hardcore customizability. This is a very customizable game compared to just about everything else you're going to find on the market. This is a game that allows you to fiddle with stuff. A lot. Um, we've got a 12 to 15 hatchet over here. Yeah, I think I probably go back in on some daggers, I guess. There we go. That actually increased his damage by quite a lot. The interesting thing is, as you're playing through the game, what you will find is that as you're playing through the game, you can end up with some really weird combos. Like, there are items in this game that support every playstyle. Like, if you want to have a rogue that dabbles in healing, you can do that. Like, look at this dagger right here. It's got a whole bunch of extra holy and healing power on it on top of being a really good rogue's dagger. Like, it's kind of like, as you play the game, no matter what you do, you will find other things that are, like, useful, no matter what subtrees you've chosen for your classes, which is really nice. Now let's go ahead and we will travel to the next location. We can take an event or we can take a battle. I'm going to take an event. And as you can see, the world will assemble itself because that's what we're doing in Shattered Realm. We're kind of like putting the world back together. This game does have fishing mini games. It does have mining. It does have herbalism. Each one of these will have a quick time event that you can play around with in order to harvest those things. And then when you get them back to town, you can craft them into useful potions and items. That right there was a runestone. Uh, it increased everybody's might by two. Might determines how much you heal and how hard you hit for. A dwarven sentry wall. Uh, stands in front of you. Be ye dwarves or not, a deep dwarven voice calls out from the stone. Trouble will surely arise if you don't play along. Let's roll them dice then. That's what I say. Uh, who's good at this? It looks like Trace Adia is the guy we want. He gets a plus one. Roll him. We rolled a 19. We're good to go. This game does have D&D &D elements to it as well. Of course I'm a dwarf, you beardless stone eater. Your flawless impression fools the sentry and you are now free to pass. We also got 200 XP, which is a lot of XP. I don't know if you noticed, but the entire quest gives us 400 XP on its conclusion. And we just got 200, so that's a pretty solid bonus right there. What does this do? A giant obsidian monolith towers over you. Carved in the center is a mysterious emerald rune emanating magical power. Uh, we can activate a blessing, and it will give us celerity, which allows us to increase our dexterity. I'm going to go ahead and do that, I suppose. I would like to activate that on one of my casters. So I guess Trace Adia can take it. There we go. Uh, Trace Adia's got it rocking, but I think we need to slot it in first. Oh, no, it was dexterity, wasn't it? Okay, so since it's dexterity, we kind of want that to be... All damage you and your subs deal is increased by 12%. Oh, it's specific to the character. Well, that was just a screw-up then. Uh, blessings. They're basically passives that you can slot in that make your character stronger. All right. Um, I put it on the wrong person, so now we've got, like, floating stuff on characters that don't matter. But on the plus side, we found 100 bucks laying on the ground. Like, when was the last time you found 100 bucks, you know? 100 bucks is rat. What is this? Never seen this before. A raid before you stand four target dummies. As you approach, a voice calls out from one of the dummies. What's the opposite of a hero? Because that's what the lot of you are. Luckily, we were made to turn zeros into heroes. The faster we fall, the greater your reward. What do you say? Strike us down? Uh, yeah. We can let him do it. If looks could kill, I'd be dead already. How much HP does he have? Oh, there's a bunch of them. Gotcha. Do they fight back? Now I'm curious. Hmm. 
All right, well, I'm just going to confirm the placement because, like, I don't know exactly where we are. You don't look like much, but I'm ready to be surprised, sir. You're about to find out. I'm about to show you. We're about to go stealth. Yup. Now that I'm stealth, we're going to garret this guy. Wow, there it is, dude. Would you stop messing about? Never. Throw a dagger right there. Get him with a little double stab right there. And I think we're looking pretty good. I need to put poison on my weapons, though. All right, so you move over to here. And I think we can finish him off right there. So he's now down. Move over to this side. Nerf that guy's armor. And that will leave us in a good spot to teleport on over. Smash the hell out of the thing. I'll probably go immolate on that target right there. And then I'll probably go... I mean, targeting dummies don't move. So I suppose I'm in good shape to just light everything on fire. We'll light her sword on fire. We will raise a skeletal archer to do whatever it is the skeletal archer feels like it is necessary for him to do. I'll probably haunt that guy right there so that the dot kills him off. Poison cloud that guy maybe. And then does he have mana? They do have mana, so I'm going to steal a little bit of mana. On this side, we're going to want to summon a wolf. There we go. Wolf done been summoned. Another one's down. We didn't get like the one turn kill, unfortunately, which is what I was actually hoping for, but way she goes. Actually, we may have got the one turn. Not bad. So what do I get? 600 XP, which is wild. A great sword. Two great swords, in fact. One of which is very gloomy. All right, I'll take the XP. That's good. Over here, we've got a battle or a hard battle. Let's call it a battle for right now. I'm still rusty and haven't played the game in a while, so it's a mana fountain. What is this over here? Fossils? I don't think I did a very good job right there. It threw me off. Let's go ahead and fight this pig. Let's have a hand for the hog. De -de 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 -de. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Where do I want my people at? You should probably be wide. Melee is up there on Anubis. That's fine. You kind of fall back for a second. Actually, be in that corner right there. You also be in the corner right there. All right. I think we're looking solid. We'll confirm our placements. And I think for now, probably a good idea. Let's go ahead and get ourselves a... Oh, he teleports every time he gets hit. So this guy has Rampage... And teleporting. I don't know what Rampage does, but it worries me. Uh, probably move over to here and use a pin and shot on you, maybe. That sounds good. And then we'll go ahead and mark target on him because I'm going to hit him first. I can't get him into any form of position, which is kind of a bummer. She's in a decent spot, though. Let's go ahead and teleport around and see who we can hit. And the turn right there. We're going to immolate you. We're going to fire weapon. Let's call you. Because you don't hit very hard. So we'll fire weapon you. And over there, we'll light a pig on fire. Have ourselves a roast. My family's Hawaiian, man. We know how to do a pig roast. I'm going to show you how to do this right here. We're going to get it done. We'll go ahead and keep stacking dots on him. As many as I can possibly stack. Steal a little bit of his old mana right there. And then on this side, poison my weapon. Go ahead and stealth. Step up. Garrote this guy. After he done been garroted, we'll throw a dagger at him. Uh, we'll probably cripple him. And then, man, that opening turn right there, dude. That opening turn. The absolute fusillade of damage that just went out. Wow. He brought it to him. Brought it to him heavy style. And that's a pretty thick enemy right there, man. Like, that's not an enemy that's lightweight. All of my summons are taking their turn right here. We're going to bust a shot at him and then mark him so that he takes more damage from now on. I can't get out of this situation without taking an attack of opportunity, so that's just the way it is. Uh, grab some mana real quick. Let's go ahead and move you out of the way. A little bit of poison, a little bit of damage right there. A little bit of this and that, you know? There we go. Get them lined up. Ain't too much I can do on that side. So, let's just get all the mages into a spot where they can actually shoot at somebody. Throw a fireball on over there. Probably get a skeletal archer up and running. Probably won't be enough damage to kill anybody, but it's a start. 
Bring the rogue. Oh, the rogue's out of action points. Okay. Never mind then. Ow, dude, I've been fractured. I've been gored by a boar. That I do not adore. We'll fire that right there. See if we can put this guy to sleep on this turn. Maybe, maybe not. I do have a healing spell. Does anybody need a heal? Nobody needs a heal or mana. Well, I guess I could have thrown it on her. Ah, well. Roasty toasty. You want to auto attack me to victory here, sir? Thank you. I appreciate that. Off, off, and away the pig goes, and we are victorious in yet another melee scuffle. That one wasn't quite enough. I was hoping it might be enough to bring us up to, like, some kind of uh, level up. Unfortunately, not the case. A chain quaff, huh? Is the chain quaff any good? Well, I mean, it's got a lot more armor on it. The downside is we lose a little bit of stats, so... Ah, I move people's stuff around. In some ways, this game is kind of like a collect-a-thon when it comes to the ways that you go out to get blessings and whatnot. That's actually pretty intelligent design on the part of the developers. Because, like, with a game like this, you've really, during brainstorming sessions, you've got to think about ways to get people to go back in and do the same thing that they've been doing for the last two hours. A lot of players are really, really resistant, uh, I would assume, to that kind of, like, prodding from a game. But in the case of this game, you sort of just do it naturally because you need to collect blessings, like, you need to collect gear before you can take on challenges. Like, you're not going to be able to just, like, slide forward and starch the boss. It just doesn't work like that. I think there's a lot of smart decisions here, too, with, like, the campfire, for example. If you don't need to heal and you don't need to get mana back, you actually have another option with the campfire, which is to prepare. I really like that. Uh, prepare, I think. What does prepare do? It increases your item and gold drops. That's really rad. Like, I can't tell you how many times in an RPG I've maybe showed up to, like, a campfire or something, but I have full health and full mana, and I just have to leave it behind. It doesn't give me any bonus. You can tell that despite the fact this game is using a lot of assets in its construction, those assets are being used intelligently, and the developers have, like, a sound mind for game design. Like, what if this happens? Like, they're good at thinking about, you know, secondary and, and tertiary effects that are coming through. Like, what if a player gets to a campfire and they have full health and they have full mana? How do we make it fun to get to a campfire in that case? Well, they add prepared, which gives you a fat loot buff. And who doesn't love getting loot? Resistance is increased by 20%. Okay, so we definitely don't want to fight this guy up close. We want to fight him over here, if we can manage it, where we're regenerating. Oh, it won't let me start that far back. Fair enough. No matter what the game tries to do, I'm going to fight from this healing spot back here. You cannot stop the Black Crusade. Okay. I'm going to set up my melees back here in, like, the healing area. Just right along the fringes of it. But we need to leave a gap so that these guys can all get into it on the next turn. You, your only job is to pinning shot the Black Knight so that he has to stay in place. We'll put a wolf on that guy over there. And then you'll kind of just fall back to the healing area too. Fall back to the healing area. And I think we're in okay shape here. Uh, if there's anything you can cast at a range, go ahead and do it. But like, I'm not running a whole lot of buffs and things right now, so probably not a bad idea to get an archer up and running, though. Doesn't actually seem... Oh, no, he's got 2,000 health. I was gonna say, he doesn't seem to be that tough. No, he's that tough. I lied. I guess increased damage on that guy, too, for now. And then we just hang tight. Ow! Ow! It's not as bad as I thought it would be, but, like, that was a pretty hefty AoE he just clunked us with. I'm a little bit offended. How come you can only shoot a fireball one tile? Oh, we're blinded right now. I forgot about that. When you're blind, you can only attack one tile. Uh, we are going to need to heal some people up, so we'll throw out a heal right there.
You maybe step over to here, meditate him, then step back into position. You cruise back over here. And you will drop a Skeletor on that side. Being blinded is really inconvenient. Summon a Raven right there. I'm, I'm very summon heavy right now. I don't know if you guys are into summoning builds. If you're into summoning builds, though, you're going to fit right in around here because I summon like crazy. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of summoning, but you should probably go invisible just in case he decides to come over here and clunk you. My hope here is that he would almost entirely focus on other characters. He did not do that, though. No taunt right there either. All right, immolate him. Light him on fire. We'll let that tick turn by turn over here. Wolf's almost dead, so I don't even care. Light the ground on fire. Like, he's probably going to die pretty soon anyways. Uh, mages, stay back where you're at. Melees, get on in there. There's not much I can do about it right now. Let's fracture his armor. I'm going to knock him back. It did not work, so he's apparently immune to being knocked back. That or that little step stopped it, but I have a bash, and it's supposed to knock him back. I was trying to get my rogue out of there so that I could save him before he gets smacked in the head. Uh, we are going to do a dashing strike right there to put a little bit of extra damage on him. And the turn on this side, we're going to want to dot him up. There it is. So another dot has been applied. We're going to freeze him up. There we go. He's now chilled. Maybe drain his mana a little bit. Wow, that took a big chunk of his mana out. Sort of curious if there's a way that I can apply that in the future. Over here, we're going to put Tracker's Mark on that guy so that we deal more damage to him. We're going to bust a shot at him, and we're really going to hope that he doesn't have anything too gnarly to hit us with. Dagger throw from right there. Slow him down. Just put, like, a as many hits on him as you possibly can okay he's still melee attacking i don't know the full consequences of the melee attacks that are being thrown out but we seem to be okay and we're not dying horribly if you could sir maybe help out with some of these ads there's a whole bunch of them i'm gonna go ahead and heal her right there she has another armor breaker right there so we're gonna keep breaking armor Gonna get a skeleton archer down. Get a poison cloud out to there. This is the final fight, so we kinda wanna throw everything we have at it. Does that cost AP? It does not cost AP, all right. I just want the damage out of there. I don't really need to immobilize anybody right now. A Little bit more poison probably wouldn't hurt. Okay, big blind right there. Big blind and a melee hit. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got problems. HP is a dwindling right now. Um, I guess step over to here and enchant her sword. Almost. Should die in his turn from the dot, though. I do have lay on hands over here. Lay on hands yourself, I guess. It's not really the sort of selfless thing we tend to expect from a paladin, but hey, you do what you gotta do when you're blinded and you can't see. Uh, just move over here, finish off these extra skeletal warriors. Oh, they're not even skeletons. They're just like cultist archers or something. All right, drop a wolf over there. Move up. Yeah, I suppose you can po you can, you can poison your weapon there. Might help out. He's got like eight stacks of poison on him. Yeah, so he's taking 23 shadow damage per turn right now, which is not a not an enormous amount, but it is something. Nice little dodge right there. All of my pets just attacked, which did whittle his health down a little bit. Good. Light him on fire just to, like, kind of put him on notice that, like, hey, I'm watching you. Heal the rogue. He's pretty beat up. Sunder his armor. Dashing strike right there. 
another skeletal warrior into the mix. Probably just blast that guy. Yeah. Probably want you to vanish. Go ahead. Lots of attacks here to go on this turn, which is great. And if he can just keep critting, he may actually accomplish something. Oh, he healed. So this guy casts a heal, huh? Wow, what a waste of a turn for a boss. That surprises me that the boss, like, threw out, like, a heal instead of, like, I don't know, healing himself. Or, you know, maybe, like, DPSing more. Should be able to bring him down pretty soon, I think. You know, there's Skeletal Archer over here. Gas Cloud over there. He's dead. Good pinning shot right there. And this should be, I think, the last turn. Down off and away he goes from the poison damage. This is Stolen Realm. That was one quest in Stolen Realm. And look at all this dope stuff that just dropped. Look at all these super fun things that are now making our characters better. Things that I can throw in like shields and legendary weapons. Completely and totally randomized. You never know what they're going to have on them. But the game knows how to reward you. The game knows how to be fun. The game is basically, I mean, honestly, I kind of think this is sort of a better version of Low Magic Age, in all honesty. Like, whereas Low Magic Age has been focusing on, like, reproducing... They seem to have managed to incorporate the parts of D&D that, like, matter. Like, the randomness and the dice rolls for events and stuff like that. While at the same time, keeping the whole thing flowing without getting caught up in crunch. I like it. The game continues to advance. I don't really have any complaints about it. I, I think the game is cool. I think... It's a good RPG. If that's what you're looking for, an RPG that doesn't really have a storyline, but you create a party of characters that are fully customizable, you do whatever you want, you know, for 200 hours straight, this is that game. I will see you all later. Thank you for stopping on in, and it's time for me to go. Bye, folks.